Hello, my name is Sean Jones and I'm a Human Resources Officer for Rotherkin and Taft Council. My main um, role is to advise managers and employees on um, employment policy. So a human resources officer would pretty much be involved in sort of the full life cycle of an employee. So that could be, we, you know, we could be that person ringing you up and inviting you to interview. And then we possibly could be sitting in on the interview then. Um, and then anything in between of your employment, um, whether you're going on maternity leave, paternity leave, whether you unfortunately have to go absent due to sickness, the, you know, the HR officer is there then guiding, guiding that process. If you're ever sort of, and lucky enough to, to feel as if you've been subject to any grievance or harassment or victimisation within the workplace, yet the HR officer would be that person supporting you through that process. Um, so, you know, there's a, there's a wide variety of things that a, a HR officer does. So the main tasks, I guess, which are involved in my job um, is very much in investigation work. So that might be a disciplinary investigation. If somebody, if there are allegations against a member of staff, you have to go out and investigate it. Um, sometimes you're involved in sort of capabilities of, of staff, you know, whether or not they can do their job well or not. So it's advising that, that person and also the trade unions and the manager on how that process is managed. Um, there's a lot of advising on processes. Uh, it all comes from the policies and you, and you can learn it that way. The, there's also sort of like um, welfare visits. So you, you're going out to see people who um, are absent from work and you have to manage that absence and make sure that they're being pointed in the right direction to get the support that they can get to enable them to return to work. Uh, taking into account, you know, any equality issues that they may be. If you're looking at uh, health and safety kind of things, you need to be very aware of health and safety and just, just helping putting that into process. We do have a separate health and safety team, but as a HR officer, you are very much advising on that. It may be something as simple as a DSE, sort of like a, you make sure your work placement and the way you're sitting on your chair is right and, the, you know, um, and, and stress at work is a massive thing. So you're very much involved in that kind of thing. But um, the main tasks are massive variety, uh, you'll never be bored, uh, there's constantly things to do. You're constantly working in partnership when you're a HR officer, so with all different departments within the council and external agencies. Uh, we work closely with occupational health. Um, to you know, make sure that our employees are getting the support uh, regarding their well-being. We also work closely with salaries to make sure that our employees are getting paid correctly. We work with um, sort of job analysts to make sure that um, you know our jobs are, are paid at the right rate that they should be. We work with some external agencies, so if you're involved in sort of some disciplinary issues, you might work closely with our legal advisors. Uh, you know, we, you work with heads of service, um, service directors, and you also work closely with the employees. Uh, we work with the equality and diversity team, health and safety. So there's a wide range of people that become involved in your everyday work as a HR officer. So an average working week as a HR officer could include a wide variety of things. Um, you you might know what you're doing uh, and then the phone will ring and you know you've got you have to completely change your track uh, for example say in a week I might be um, involved in change management so that might be like your manager wants to make a change to your current working arrangements so in order to do that you need to consult to trade unions and as a HR officer you'd be involved in that the next day you could be involved in a disciplinary investigation where you're out interviewing people, trying to get their view, just gathering the facts, just an independent person, you're not there to judge, you're just there to get the information. The next day you could be out on a welfare visit with somebody who's um, absent from work due to a variety of reasons. Um, so you need to be sort of aware of that. Uh, 
as a HR officer, you've also got um, your own sort of team that you need to manage. So that's giving advice and guidance on um, with your own experience and how they can answer queries. Um, yeah, so basically if you're looking for a job that every day is the same and the tasks are the same, then it's probably not for you. But if you're up for a challenge and uh, you want to experience different things every day and you're willing to take that on and just you don't mind um, being thrown in sometimes at the deep end, then it's certainly a career that you should think about. I actually studied law at university. Following this, I decided I didn't really want to go into law anymore. Um, so I took a year out and I went travelling. And when I came back, I thought, well, what can I do? And I didn't want to totally give up on my law degree. So I thought something I could use, and I looked at HR, because you do use a lot of um, employment law within HR. So I went back to university. I did a one year's master's in human resources management. Um, and then I got my first job in RCT. Um, that was 16 years ago and I'm still there. There are many other ways that you can get into, um, into HR and I'd say um, very much a lot of my colleagues started um, with no experience in HR, just came straight in sort of on a, on a lower grade to learn and get the experience and they have been supported throughout their career then to actually get qualifications within HR. So that could be sort of from a certificate up to a degree. And also a lot of people have been supported and had paid to, to do their masters in HR. So you don't need the qualifications uh, necessarily to get in to start. Um, but because you can be supported when you're, when you're in there and they will help you and um, certainly within the council that they will support you to, to get that qualification. I'd say the favourite, my favourite part of the role is um, the investigation work. I get to feel as if I'm a uh, detective, I guess, for the, um, the time that I'm doing an investigation. Um, you get to go out and interview people um, who have been subject to sort of like misconduct cases or if you've done something wrong in work. Um, you're very much likely to come across a HR officer who would then be sort of like trying to find out what the facts are. I've been involved in some really, you know, um, interesting cases during my time as a, as a HR officer. So I've investigated um, theft allegations. Um, sexual discrimination claims um, and also you know other claims such as um, social media do you know don't write things about your boss on social media because they can get you in a lot of trouble i say the challenges are that you're very much going to find yourself at a time when you meet employees um, it's the worst time of their lives they could be off sick, they could be facing disciplinary action or they could be subject to a change that you're not happy about. So you're going to face a lot of negativity around that. Um, so that's probably one of the worst parts. I'd say that there's massive support within RCT. Um, they've got fantastic senior managers who will give you advice and guidance, very experienced. Um, and obviously there's, there's so much other parts of um, support that you get in RCT. Um, you know, occupational health if you need it. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's um, a good role. I think the skills are needed to be a HR officer is you need to be a good um, researcher. If you can research what you need to say and then be able to use good negotiation skills to put that research across to show that you know what you're talking about, that's a really good um, you know, aspect to have. You need to be flexible, um, nothing's ever the same. Uh, you could be doing one thing, you think, you're, you think you know what you're doing that day and the phone will ring and you've got to be on the ball and off to do the next thing. So you need to be flexible and you need to be organised, very much organised, you need to be able to meet deadlines and um, be able to build good relationships with people. Um, that's very important because you're meeting lots of people and they don't know you and you really need to build a relationship quickly to be able to, to move the situation along. Um, and I guess you need empathy 
because many of our, um, you know, put yourself in their shoes. A lot of people you meet, as I said, they're going to be, um, you know, upset about the situation and you need to have some empathy there um, to try and get the best possible outcome.